Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Angela. And I decided to go ahead and do, um, I have, it's Monday, April 3rd. Um, I'm off today because I have a few doctor's appointments, but, um, I decided to go ahead and do the spread that Marlena Teresa did for Aries Deacon, Aries 2, the second de Deacon of Aries for the Deacon Walk. And... As you can see, it actually has, it says on here, because we have the sun and Aries, um, it says take the sun card from your deck and place it in the center position of your spread. Keep the deacon cards, the three of wands, and the emperor off to the side. Then pull cards around the sun as follows. So basically, just a real quick recap, the card that corresponds with deacon two is the three of wands. And... The three wands represents the sun and Aries. And the Aries is representative of the emperor. And the sun is representative of the sun and tarot. So that's how we got those three cards. So, um, and I don't know where my deck and, or deacon will is, but let me see if I can find it real quick. There is a deacon will and I just dropped the book. My book. I have a binder here journal and keeping track of things so and how we got the three of wands is we these are easily printed off anywhere just google deacon will um and then we start with aries which is a cardinal sign it's a fire uh, sign so we started with march 21st to march 30th was deacon one which was the two of wands and then March 31st to April 10th is where we're at now in Deacon 2, Deacon 2 which is the three of wands. So that's how we got the three of wands. <laughs> so I, uh, real quick, before I have to run to my first appointment, I was going to go ahead and do the spread that Marlena Teresa did on the Aries 2. Um, and there's five cards, but there's really only four questions because the sun is the center card. Um, and then we have just what she say, the, um, uh, the sun pull, then pull cards around the sun as follows. So it's, I pulled the cards. I went ahead and did a meditation, um, sat with the cards, pulled them. I haven't looked at them. So this is the first time we're looking at them together. So for card one, position one, we have the sun. Um, and I ran out of room down here below. So that's why it's covered a little bit with the, the card three. So for number two is domicile. Where am I happiest? So that would be up here. And I pulled the knight of swords. <laughs> And it's hilarious because I literally, as soon as I flipped this over, heard slaying demons. Um, I'm happiest slaying demons. I'm happiest solving problems, putting out fires. Um, makes total sense to me because I'm a Virgo. So I'm all about conflict resolution and things like that. So that makes total sense. <laughs> um, and the Knight of Swords, I do resonate with the sword suit most of all. So that makes total 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 sense and if we you notice here because this is the journey of the sacred bee i'm using for the deck and walk um and it's got the air sign below in the night and that's beautiful so that was quick and easy and painless <laughs> number three de detriment what is disrupting that feeling that might be harsh a little bit oh my god we have the emperor which is if we know by just what I said is Aries, um, that's crazy. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I pulled the emperor or the emperor was in the last spread only because it is the Aries symbol. Um, it is the representative of A the Aries sign, which we are still in. So, um, and I totally feel that, that there, there's this authoritative, almost demeanor trying to come out of me that's not, really me so i'm either fighting it or i'm either bucking up against it from someone else because i'm not a, a role player um even though i'm a virgo 
Um, I don't like others telling me what to do. <laughs> and that totally makes sense to me that there's someone in my life that has this emperor energy. And I'm just like, no, you are not, you cannot come at me like that. Um, makes total sense. Uh, total, total sense. Uh, but it could be because I don't like change either. So I'm a person that does not like change. Virgos do, they like, they find what works and stick with it. Um, they don't like disrupting that pattern. So it makes sense to me if someone is trying to teach me a new way of doing something or a new way of thinking about something, I'm like, no, because this already works. However, this could be a shortcut and I'm just unwilling to, um, learn it. Um, all of that makes total sense. <laughs> um, this is crazy. So number three, four, sorry. Number four, exalted. How can I invite joy in? And we have this card, the four of swords recovery. Oh my God. So, um, and then we have the, uh, these are different symbols here. I, I can't remember what planet that is, but I think that's, or that's the planet. I don't know. I don't know the symbols all right away. I do know Aries for sure now. And I know Mars and the sun, but that's about it. <laughs> but the four of swords is about recovery. It's about resting, um, taking time to take a break. And as again, Virgo and me is like, no, we can be so much more productive if we do this and this and this. Like today I've got, um, like, stuff I had I had stuff lined up and then I'm like no I need to take one of those things out because it's just too much um so that makes total sense um that take the time to breathe and reboot in between projects or in between um things I'm doing workloads I'm doing and I just did a spread Did I do a spread? I did a card pull the other day or something that was, a, or I did a video and it was the 10 of, I pulled the 10 of, um, oh my gosh. No, I pulled the 10 of wands from my new deck that I pulled and it makes total sense because there's a lot of heavy burdens going on, a lot of heavy stuff going on at work. So it makes total sense that I would be pulling this, this energy of you need to take time to remember to breathe and reboot in between these projects because I'm one of those people that I don't. <laughs> so again, all of this is making total sense. So number five, fall. What should I avoid? What should I avoid? And I've got the princess of swords. Um, and then first of all, I just want to say that is stunning. This deck is stunning. It's one of my top five decks ever. Um, I love it. <laughs> Um, which is why everything here makes total sense to me because I've used this deck so much. Um, and it's funny because it's not a deck I was ever going to buy. It haunted me and was like, you need to buy me. And then once I bought it, um, and I have all swords except this emperor. That's interesting as well. They're all swords. Um, which I feel it's funny because I feel right at home in the sword suit. Um, a lot of the sword suit is about overcoming obstacles or um, overcoming your mindset. Um, and which is funny because we have the emperor, the emperor is the thing we need to overcome. Um, let me see what, what number is that? Three. That's the detriment. What's disrupting this feeling is this emperor, but because I have this trifecta here of the certain mindset, um, the emperor is disrupting that. Um, and I totally see that because it's all swords except for the emperor here who is disrupting this pattern of all swords. So that too, it just hits on another deeper level that it's bringing home that emperor energy. Um, especially now that we're in airy season. Um, this is crazy that I've done this deck and walk because <laughs> we're only on the second one and it's just, mind boggling and mind blowing every time I do a spread every time I pull a card it's it's crazy um so yeah that is nuts so the princess of swords I see always see the princess I always see the uh page or the princess as someone that is 
learning their skills, learning their craft, um, because they can't wait to grow up and be in the battle, fight the battle. And I think it's funny that we have the knight and the princess here. Um, the knight is somebody that's, you know, all about fighting the battle and, and, and getting in there and doing the work. And the princess is like, I, I have all the skills. I'm getting all the skills to do that, um, to join the knight. Um, which makes sense. And then here it's like, you've done all this work. Now it's time to rest. And the emperor's like, but you still have so much more to learn. <laughs> Ah, totally makes sense. So let's look at the book real quick. So for card two, which is the Knight of Swords, right? Make sure I have them in the right order. This is the craziest thing, y'all. This deep dive I've been doing is just crazy. So the Knight of Swords. And they're just little blurbs on here. However, I do love this deck. This is a more thought-based deck. Um, I do have all three of, uh, it doesn't say on the box here, but I do have all three of her decks. Uh, I have the Wisdom of the Sacred Bee Oracle, and then the more recent Keeper of the Sacred Bee Tarot, which is an RWS-based tarot. Um, they're all stunning, and they're all amazing. <laughs> and I've been, I used the Keeper of the Sacred Bee last week, um, and the Wisdom of the Sacred Bee. Anytime I use an Oracle deck with either of these decks, it's going to be that deck. Um... Just because they are all three meant to go together. And I love it. And they all read fantastic. <sighs> and I'm dribbling. So here, we have the Knight of Swords. And the words here, and it, I love how it says Air of Air. Um, and in, in the um, regular, not the not the um, courts, but the regular miners, they actually give you, like this one's Mars and Gemini, Jupiter and Gemini, Moon and Aquarius. So they give you what planet goes with what sign in the cards. So I think that's amazing. Even though they're little blurbs, it's so much. <laughs> so we have the Knight of Swords, Air of Air. The Knight of Swords is extremely impulsive as in an act now, think later personality. Hastiness sometimes leads to careless efforts, but they are intelligent and inquisitive enough to figure it out. Um, and I totally get that. Sometimes I, uh, even though I'm a Virgo and we're all about like statistical analysis before we make a decision. I am more on the end of if I want something, I'm going to get it right then. I, I don't care. I'm not waiting. Um, and that could be just part of my upbringing is I never actually had things. So when I want something now, I get it. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I, if I hadn't have been like that, I might have been more like the, um, impulsiveness or the, um, the uh, more data statistical analysis before I purchase something or do something. But I am more like the Knight of Swords in that I do have impulsive moments um, that I maybe need to th think through before I'm slaying those dragons um, and taking a rest. Or maybe I need to rest before I slay the dragons. <laughs> so for card three, we got... Let me make sure it was card three. Card three, detriment. What is disrupting the feeling? We have the emperor, and that is a major, and I, look at that, I turned it literally right to it. So it gives you a little blurb here, and then it gives you a little bit more information. It says, per pursue passion and dreams, build an empire, be responsible for creating stability for yourself and others, take charge of your life. It says, Hebrew letter, H-E-H, -E -H, zodiac sign Aries. The journey. After the bee gains an understanding from the empress of how powerful sacred natural forces work when they are in allowed to flourish, she encounters the emperor. The emperor is ruled by Mars and uses active will to build what he needs. But with acquisition comes the responsibility of rulership and oversight. There is a balance that comes with the nature, mature leadership that it takes to build an empire. He must conquer, but also take care and provide for his people. The emperor is also the great architect and teaches the skill set of building perfectly proportional structures. The stone rose symbolizes the skill right there. Ma the, that skilled masonry of the emperor. Divinatory meaning building an empire takes both effort, also caring for what you strive to escalate. Controlling forces are at play, so armor up and you'll pass through the fire unscathed. 
With leadership comes the responsibility of being in charge, but also being of service to others. So there's a balance that needs struck there. And the tarot has been te- telling me since I started learning tarot, strike a balance, strike a balance, find your balance. <laughs> so makes total sense. So now we have the um, card four, which is the four of swords. Um, back to four of swords. Recovery, Jupiter and Libra. So that's Jupiter and Libra there. Rest after strife. Taking time to recover from a stressful situation. Go within. Meditate. Can mean retirement or taking a break to heal. Um, yeah, totally makes sense. <laughs> and then last but not least, the fall. What should I avoid? The Princess of Swords. <clears throat> And this is the earth of air, inquisitive by nature and may seem distracted or oblivious to others as they process the task at hand, impulsively carried away by ideas, working on skills necessary to accomplish this task at hand. So it is kind of like I am more, my inner energy is more like the page of swords and the fact that I take action first and think about the consequences later whereas the knight he may act impulsively but he's also had some forethought in what he's doing before he actually goes diving in um and all of those can be chaotic especially if i'm not listening to the emperor or not paying attention to that emperor energy and it's going to cause me to need to take time to rest and recover so that makes total sense in this reading and i will post um marlena choice's video below of her uh showing the um oh my god what's the word i'm looking for showing this spread um below and if you guys have any questions comments concerns don't hesitate to comment below if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you want to see more please subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification button so you're alerted to any future videos and y'all have a good night bye